listeners, and welcome to the Afriwetu to podcast, where we look to celebrate African history by telling our story. As always, our hope is that it fills you with enough curiosity to go and do your own deeper research. Now, as you're aware, one of the things that I do want to focus on in this Afriwetu journey is the importance of fables and folklore as part of our story. So today is a fable and folklore show. And I'm very pleased to have in studio with me my cousin and today's guest speaker, George Shinganya. So this is the first time that George has been in a studio. He's been very, very nervous about it. I'm going to be very nice and very gentle. <laughs> so George, low ball question. Tell my listeners where you're from. And you can also add how I snookered you into doing this for me using family bonds, shamelessly, etc., cetera, et cetera. <laughs> uh, Well, first of all, Yes. I, I am a little bit nervous. And to be honest, I was about to clap for myself, <laughs> give myself a little intro. Well done, well done. <laughs> you know what I mean? I showed up, I showed up. Yes. So, well, you could say you snookered me, but to be honest, uh, <laughs> I was a bit excited to show up, right? It's something that I think is important. I, oh, I, uh, family is so lovely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't need to know how much he's paying me, folks. So, yeah. <laughs> Yes, but to be honest, I, I did think it was a good and worthy cause and I'd be more than happy to come back again. Thank you, cuz. How George and I actually family is that he's my cousin from my Tanzanian side. So what it is actually is that today's folklore and, and uh, fable, I wanted to tell from my motherland, essentially. So the story is called The Calabash Kids. Um, I would like to now segue nicely for George to start telling us the story. Um, so here is me segueing nicely for George <laughs> to tell us the story. So tell us about the Calabash Kids and over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, to be honest, I'm going to try and tell this the way I would tell it to my son at home, bedtime. So bear with me, folks. Here we go. The Calabash Kids. Once there was a woman named Shindo who lived in a village at the foot of a mountain. Her husband had died and she had no children. She was very lonely and she was always too tired. She had no one to help her with her chores. All on her own, she cleaned the hut and the yard, she tended the chickens, washed her clothes in the river, carried water, cut firewood, and cooked her solitary meals. At the end of each day, Shindo looked up at the heavens. Great Almighty, she would pray, my work is too hard, send me some help. One day, Shindo was weeding a small field by the river where she grew vegetables and bananas and gourds. Suddenly, a noble chieftain appeared beside her. I am a messenger from the Great Almighty, he told the astonished woman, and he handed her some gourd seeds. Plant these carefully, they are the answer to all your prayers. Then the chieftain vanished. Shindo wondered, what help can I get from a handful of seeds? Still, she planted and tended them as carefully as she could. She was amazed at how quickly they grew. In just one week, long vines trailed over the ground and the ripe gourds hung from them. Shindo brought the gourds home, sliced off the tops and scooped out the pulp. She then laid the gourds on the roof of the hut to dry. When they hardened, she could sell them at the market as calabashes to be made into bowls and jugs. One fine gourd Shindo set by the cook fire. This one she wanted to use herself. And she hoped it would dry faster. The next morning, Shindo went off again to tend her field. But meanwhile, back at the hut, the gods began to change. They sprouted heads, then arms, then legs. Soon they were not gods at all. They were children. <laughs> One day, 
One boy lay by the fire where Shindo had put the fine gourd, and the other children called to him from the roof. Kitete helped his brothers and sisters down from the roof. Then the children ran through the hut and yard, singing and playing. All joined in, but Kitete. Dried from the fire had made the boy slow-witted, so he just sat there smiling widely. After a while, the other children started on the chores. They quickly cleaned the hut and yard, fed the chickens, washed the clothes, carried water, cut firewood, and cooked a meal for Shindo to eat when she returned. When the work was done, Kitete helped the others climb back on the roof. Then they all turned into gourds. That afternoon, as Shindo returned home, the other women of the village called to her. Who are those children in your yard today? They asked. Where did they come from? Why were they doing all your chores? What children are you talking about? Are you making fun of me? Said Shindo angrily. But when she reached the hut, she was astounded. The work was done, and even her meal was ready. She could not imagine who had helped her. The next morning, Shindo pretended to leave, but she hid beside the door at a hut and peeked in. And so she saw the gods turn into children and heard the ones at the rooftop call out, "Kitete, come help us! We'll work for our mother. Come help us, Kitete, our favorite brother." As the children rushed out the door, they nearly ran into Shindo. She was too astounded to speak, and so were the children. But after a moment, they went on with their playing and then on with their chores. When they were done, they started to climb back on the rooftop. No, no! cried Shindo. You must not change back into gods. You will be my children. You will be the children I never had, and I will love you and care for you. So Shindo kept the children as her own. She was no longer lonely, and all the children were so helpful. She soon became very rich, with many fields of vegetables and bananas, and flocks of sheep and goat. That is, all were helpful but Kitete, who stayed by the fire with his simple-minded smile. Most of the time, Shindo didn't mind. In fact. Kitete was really her favorite because he was like a sweet baby. But sometimes, when she was tired and unhappy about something else, she would get annoyed at him. Why can't you be smart like your brothers and sisters and work hard as they do? Kitete would only grin back at her. One day. Shindo was out in the yard cutting vegetables for a stew. As she carried the pot from the bright sunlight into the hut, she tripped over Kitete and fell, and the clay pot shattered everywhere. Vegetables and water streamed all over the hut. Haven't I told you to stay out of my way? But what can I expect? You're not a real child at all. You are nothing but a calabash. That very moment, she gave a scream. Kitete was no longer there, and in his place there was a god. Oh, what have I done? She cried. As the children crowded into the hut, I didn't mean what I said. You're not a calabash. You're my own darling son, Kitete. Oh, children, please do something. The children looked at each other. Then, over each other, they climbed, scampering on the rooftop. When the last child had been helped by Shindo, they called out one last time, "Kitete, come help us! We'll work for our mother. Come help us, Kitete, our favorite brother." For a long moment, nothing happened. Then slowly, the god began to change. It sprouted a head, then arms, and then legs. At last, it was not a god at all. It was Kitete. Shindo learned a lesson. Ever after, she was very careful what she called the children, and so they gave her comfort and happiness for the rest of her days. <laughs> the end. Oh, 
thank you very much. Wasn't that brilliant, guys? So, George, first of all, I know you were very nervous, but you did do a very good job. So don't worry about it. Um, so this particular story is actually a Chaga fable. Uh, interestingly, obviously, George's wife is Chaga. Hi, Lillian. <laughs> I do this uh, for you. <laughs> as well as for his two gorgeous children. So I just want to say again, thank you very much. Uh, thank you also to Teresa, who's in the studio supporting her brother. My other thank cousin. you, Tree. <laughs> Um, and I'd just like to say thank you all for listening as well. Um, and here ends our journey to Tanzania and this fable and folklore show. And I do hope you enjoyed today's show. Thank you for listening. And until next time, Mubarikiwe. Thank you, guys. If you have any feedback, any questions, comments, please do visit us on our social media platforms at Afriwetu on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can also email us at afriwetu at gmail.com. And please feel free to also leave a message at anchor.fm forward slash afriwetu.